Hi, welcome to the Virgo New Moon group meditation and my talk today on raising your vibration in Virgo with particular relevance to the times we're in. So the Virgo New Moon was exact at 2 a.m. British summertime this morning. Um, the key note for Virgo is I am the mother and the child. I, God, I matter, am. Uh, Virgo is an earth sign, has a strong affinity and connection to mother nature and all aspects of our health, as well as the health of our planet. It's a sign strongly associated with the connection between spirit and matter. So in Virgo, we look to spiritualize matter and we can choose wisely to allow matter, our planet, to nourish our body, the vehicle for our indwelling spirit. So Virgo is also related to seeking to understand the depths of the mysteries, the mysteries of knowledge, wisdom. And it's also the seed sower of new ideas in the womb of the mind. And so we're given the opportunity in Virgo, especially to develop critical thinking and a discriminative mind through the power of Mercury, its orthodox ruler. The new moon is a particularly powerful time for sowing the seeds of change as the days before are shrouded in darkness and that which is hidden is often revealed to us both individually and collectively during this period that we call the dark side of the moon. As we explore the hidden depths of these revelations, we're given the opportunity to sow the seeds of new ideas, new perspectives, to change our mind and the energy of rebirth associated with the emergence of the new moon a couple of days later. So do not underestimate the power of the moon uh, with its ability to move all of the oceans on our planet daily, creating the tides. So our planet is 70% water, and it's no coincidence that our bodies are also 70% water and just as affected by the influence of the phases of the moon as our planet is. Esoterically, water symbolizes our emotional desire nature. And so the new moon is often a time at that which resides in the depths of your subconscious mind is brought to the surface for your examination. And in Virgo, we are asked to employ the capacities of critical thinking to ascertain greater understanding of the truth and sow the necessary seeds of change as directed by our soul or our higher self. So Virgo has the moon as its esoteric ruler. So the time of the Virgo new moon each year is an unprecedented opportunity to sow the seeds of change in your life. And this not only applies to us individually, but to humanity as a whole. So Virgo is a sign of service, and we're called to serve less from a personality-driven perspective, focusing on me and my experience of life at this time, and increasingly to, to seek intuitive guidance from our soul to find our own particular way of serving the greater good. So service underlies the evolutionary process on this planet, and we each have a part to play through service in that evolution. So today I want to explore the idea that the greatest service we can give to humanity at this time in particular, and the greatest need for those who are awake and aware is to raise their vibration and keep their vibrational frequency high. This equates esoterically to greater contact with your soul light and to let that light shine out into the world so that others may find their way through the darkness that we face together in the world at the moment. It is to lift up from the solar plexus, focus on fear, doubt, uncertainty, and anxiety, up into the Christ consciousness of the heart to find the qualities of courage, clarity, empathy, compassion, and ultimately your love for all of your fellow men. So in Virgo, we're urged to find the Christ within the heart and to attune to the second ray of love wisdom while cultivating the virtues of the sixth ray of devotion and idealism that also runs through Virgo and through the critical thinking and discrimination of the fifth ray of the scientific concrete mind. So these three energies all combine and interplay in Virgo. So let me explain what I mean 
by raise your vibrational frequency. So our mind creates perceptions based on our responses to the world around us. These perceptions create chemical changes in our body and affect our biology. And this is the basis of the work by scientists like Dr. Bruce Lipton and Candice Bergman and many others. So how we think has an effect on how we feel and ultimately how we feel feeds back to our brain to affect how we think. And I wanna show you a slide that beautifully illustrates this, what I call thinking feeling loop because many people don't realize that this is going on. So we create thoughts in our mind. And if these are, for example, um, fearful thoughts, thoughts of uncertainty, overwhelm, stressful, negative thoughts, neuropeptides are produced that flood our body. And this will give us the feelings associated with doubt and fear, the stress response, the cortisol, the adrenaline, the noradrenaline. Um, and these feelings, this will create feelings in our body. And then there's a feedback loop from the body to the mind where chemical messengers are sent back to the mind to say, this is how the body is feeling. And what happens is the mind then creates more thoughts to be in alignment with the feelings. And you'll recognize this if you've ever spiraled down into a loop of negative thinking. It starts with a thought, and before you know it, you're in an overwhelming state where everything feels like it's a problem. And you've taken that thought and run with it, and it's become huge. Um, and the interesting thing is that that thought, that initial thought might not have even been true, but you've created a whole state of being based on this thought feeling loop. So when we indulge in anxious, worrying thoughts and believe that life is a struggle, these thoughts create the release of the stress hormones, adrenaline, noradrenaline and cortisol. They create inflammation in the body and they produce the stress response, which shuts down your immune system, shuts down your capacity to grow and your ability to think clearly. So this is the brain fog, the, the clouded inability to concentrate and remember that you get when you feel quite highly agitated. In this state, you don't have access to the higher mind or true reasoning, and you don't have access to the process of critical thinking and discrimination. So if you're bombarded by messages and thoughts of fear and doubt, you wind up in a state where you cannot get yourself out of this loop and it's impossible to access your higher states of thinking and being. If, however, you choose to lift up into your heart and really connect with feelings or thoughts of gratitude, appreciation, trust, we can build a positive loop that builds and strengthens our immune system. So if that initial thought started the stress response and we recognize that in our body, ah, oh, yeah, I'm feeling that butterflies in my stomach, my heart rate's increasing, I'm feeling tense in my shoulders, the stress response. We can choose to take our mind into our heart and to focus on, for example, gratitude. Um, appreciation, trust. And what that does is that it, we're coming in through the body here. That will then feed back to the mind and calm the mind down. It'll bring the mind into coherence with the heart. And you can stop that negative um, thought feeling loop from running away from you. And you can almost like slice it, stop it. Um, because if these thought feeling patterns become patterns and they become personality traits. So if you are a worrier, you become a worrier because you're always going around the worry cycle. If you're someone who's very sensitive and gets stressed easily and overwhelmed easily, you have a pattern and it creates a deep groove in your brain. And there's a lot of research that says when you start to change this, you actually start to rewire the neurons in your brain. You change the physical matter in your brain. So if you 
recognize this process, you recognize that you're feeling overwhelmed by thoughts that have come usually from outside of you or from other people or from other sources. You can come into your body and you can choose to stop this negative feedback loop and instead create a positive one. So you focus on gratitude and this will strengthen your immune system because these chemical messengers that are produced in the body are very pro-health um, chemicals. And what it does, it opens you up to your higher awareness, to up into your higher self and an understanding that comes from seeing a situation from a higher perspective. So instead of spiraling down into a place where you can't use your pure reasoning, discriminative mind and critical thinking, it lifts you up into connection through the heart with your higher self where you can lift up above a situation and see the truth of that situation, see the drama playing out, see that it's not some of it's not true. Question whether it's true. You still have all the capacity of your more advanced thinking mind, if you like. So we see the bigger picture, we can hold a space for a clear sighted vision of where all this change might be heading. And this is what we need to do at the moment, we can get caught up in going down that tunnel, that negative tunnel, um, constant messages from the media, from people who are fearful, and you'll be, even the strongest mind will be pulled into this loop. Or you can choose to lift yourself up to a higher perspective to keep your vibration or frequency, your energy high, because this thought, your thoughts have a huge impact on your vibrational frequency, on your vibration, if you like. So when we do this, when we cut through this negative loop, we open to our buddhic nature and the insights and intuition that give us a greater understanding of what's going on. We open to the heart qualities of courage, of trust, of having faith and hope, um, the qualities that, that believe that mankind will get through this and you have the capacities to get through this yourself. So we are in a time of huge paradigm shift and it's a critical time for both humanity and for our planetary body. So if we think of the planet as a living being, the old paradigm is one based on fear and control. And this has a very low vibrational frequency. This is the perception that is cre creating all the divisions we're seeing in mainstream communities and families and scientific disciplines and many health focused and spiritual groups throughout the world. You are either in the camp of accepting the official narrative, explaining what is going on, or you're a conspiracy theorist. And there's this division, these polar opposites. But this division, especially when emotionally charged, serves only to polarize humanity and does little to develop critical thinking through healthy debate and discussion. But this healthy debate and discussion is only possible with frank and honest disclosure of truth and the facts. And Virgo, we are asked to sort the truth from the untruth or the distorted truth, to use our rational mind to evaluate the factual evidence for ourselves, not simply believe blindly what we are told. To employ critical thinking, which is defined as self-directed, self-disciplined, self-monitored, self-corrective thinking, and asserts rigorous standards of excellence and mindful command of their use. That's the Wikipedia definition. This is why healthy, non-judgmental, open discussion and debate is needed more than ever to help people to navigate the propaganda and the manipulation of information, to balance the pairs of opposites, and not simply to believe what authoritar authoritative bodies dictate, but to wake up and learn to think for themselves. And we're asked to do this in Virgo particularly. The new paradigm will slowly emerge from the rubble of the disintegration of the old. I believe we are in the transition and we are in the disintegration of the old. This new paradigm is based on love and has a higher vibrational frequency. And we can access it through courage, trust, hope, and faith. These are the qualities of spiritual staying power and a determination not to drop down into the depths of fear, uncertainty, and anxiety. 
when we allow ourselves to believe all we're told and drop into these lower vibrational states, we feel adrift, untethered, lost, isolated. And we look for something solid outside of us to save us. We will believe and agree to anything just to feel a sense of solidity, solidarity and security again. And this leaves us wide open to manipulation and control through the mind. But the solid ground is not to be found outside of us. It's to be found within us. Let me explore a few known truths about energy. Remember that your vibrational frequency is really a measure of your energy vibration. The sum total of all of the different parts of you, you could say the layers of you from your physical to your, your etheric body, your emotions, your mind, your spiritual connection. You could say it's the sum total of the vibrational frequencies of your chakras, the amount of soul energy coming through, the amount of energy you're taking in from the environment. So increasingly quantum science is starting to agree with the esoteric understanding that everything is energy, just vibrating at different frequencies. In fact, Einstein said everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot, cannot help but get that reality. And can, it can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is physics. So you attract what vibrates at the same energetic frequency as you are vibrating. So if you remain in fear, you will attract what you fear. You'll attract more fear. If you lift into love and trust, you will attract that which supports this mindset. This is the power of our minds that many of us don't really appreciate the power of our minds yet. But we're getting there. This works individually, collectively. So if we are in collective fear and uncertainty, that is what we will attract as a collective consciousness, as a human family. Energy cannot go anywhere. Remember this back to physics at school. It can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transmuted. So it can change from any of its aspects, physical, emotional, mental. But once transmuted, it cannot go back to its old state. It cannot replicate its old state. So fear can be transmuted into love, courage, gratitude, compassion, understanding of the higher mind. We feel and sense energy in others. We feel and sense the vibrational uh, frequency of others. We know now that the electromagnetic field, for example, that surrounds our heart emits a certain frequency based on how we are thinking and feeling on that loop. And this can be measured for several feet around a person. We either emanate with love from the heart or fear from the solar plexus. We, we radiate love or we add to the contagion of fear because fear is contagious. Fear at the level of the solar plexus is as contagious as a virus. Um, so our vibrational frequency depends on many factors in any given moment. And it's a combination of all the different aspects of us from physical, emotional, mental, what we call our etheric or subtle energy body and vibrations. So our physical health vibration and the purity of the food and water we consume is affected by the purity in the, of the water and the food we consume. This is why organic food and food made with love has a higher vibration. Processed food, alcohol, caffeine, and food high in sugars lowers our vibration. Pain and chronic illness, inflammation, fatigue, nervous tension, emotional exhaustion, all contribute to a lower physical vibrational state. You know when you're experiencing those, your immune system is compromised because remember your vibration equates to the capacity and the quality of your immunity. We can raise our vibration by coming into resonance with the higher vibrations of certain vitamins and minerals, healing herbs, because when we, when we use vibrational medicine, we entrain, we attune to the vibration of the product we're, we're bringing into our body. So if it has a high vibration, it lifts our vibration. 
So things like herbs, homeopathy, natural remedies, bark flower remedies, essential oils, crystals, salt lamps, all work on vibrational energy. This is how they allow your body to heal itself by retuning your body. You can use heat stress, cold bathing, sound and light therapy, grounding and connecting with nature and the resonance of the earth, cleansing your etheric body and revitalizing with your prana, your subtle energy by being in the sunshine. You can consciously choose your energy environment, both physically and psychically, online, as well as in person, via social media. You can choose your mental diet and your energy environment with the people that you have association with and the ideas that you allow into your mental diet, into your mind. So if you connect with that with which resonates with the qualities of truth, beauty and goodness, these are the three fundamental qualities of the soul that will lift you up into the vibration of your soul. And this is the highest vibration that you are capable of at this time. So you can view my previous talks. There's lots of talks on the insights into the chakras and understanding energy esoterically and consciously raising your vibration that go into more detail about the ways to enhance your physical vibrational energy but we need to realize that by far the biggest contributor to our overall vibrational energy is our state of mind so you can do all the things to keep yourself well to raise your physical vibration but if you're not looking to your state of mind your health your immunity your whole vibrational frequency will be lowered it will be compromised so harmlessness for example, and right thought, intention, and action all raise your vibration and keep it raised. This is the basis of Buddhist teachings. Being in touch and guided by your conscience, your conscience, not someone else's ideas, not the ideas on the telly, not what somebody told you, your conscience raises your vibration. Not gossiping, treating others as you wish to be treated raises your vibration. Joy has the highest vibration of any feeling. And I believe this is why children's immune systems are so much stronger than adults, because they laugh more. They experience and open more to joy. Um, giving altruistically which is an action of love without any thought for personal gain, raises your vibration. OK, so instead of focusing on how you are experienced this pandemic, get out there and help someone who's having a harder time than you are. Right use of physical energy connects you to the universal pranic or subtle energy. You, you plug in. Right use of emotional energy connects you to your buddhic heart and the indwelling Christ consciousness within you. Right use of mental energy connects you with universal consciousness and the mind of God so that you might know the will of God and enact that in your life through your particular service. Thoughts have mass, very small mass, but thoughts are things. Thoughts have mass. And so they can pull things towards them through gravity like any mass does. When many people have the same thought, so one person having one thought doesn't have a lot of gravitational pull, but when many people have the same thought, the cumulative mass grows and gravity grows until the thought becomes tangible, becomes manifest, it becomes an actual force that has a measurable effect in the world, it comes into being, and this is how thought energy works. So this is the power of our collective thought to either plummet us into more self-destruction or lift our collective consciousness toward creating a new world, a new paradigm, operating at a higher vibrational frequency. Think back to that thought feeling loop I mentioned earlier. Every time you choose not to go down that negative thought feeling loop, you are contributing to the vibrational energy of humanity as a whole. You're helping to keep it lifted. You are responsible for your part in the collective thought consciousness. We are in a crisis 
of critical thinking and mass thought control at the moment, we are being severely challenged on this level. Do you choose to be part of that or do you choose to think for yourself? Einstein said, those who have the privilege to know have the duty to act. So that's a call. If you are party to this information and this knowledge, you have a duty to act. I have some interesting information. Um, a friend of mine on Facebook, who's a, a young man, but a very um, knowledgeable esoteric in esoteric meets science. And he presented something that's wonderful. Um, just get rid of this. And what he presented has got really got me thinking. So he said the coronavirus, like all viruses, has a very low vibrational frequency. So Hertz is just a measure of vibrational frequency. So it's about 5.5 to 14.5 Hertz. It's destroyed at a vibrational frequency of 25.5. Now remember, whatever frequency we are vibrating at, we attract that which is um, of a similar or a lower frequency. So the vibrational frequencies, I'm not sure where this data has come from, but they've mapped and measured the vibrational frequencies of different emotional states. So you can see there, if your body is in an inflammatory state, which inflammation now we recognize is mostly created in the body through the production of cortisol, which is when people are in a chronic stressful state, they're living stress, stress, stress all the time not just periods of acute stress, but it's become how they live. So anxiety, anger, pride, see loneliness here makes you really vulnerable. Okay, so these are all quite low vibrational frequencies. But if you have a look here, if you're in generosity, you're way above this. You're not going to, uh, you're not going to be at risk here for um, this virus affecting you on an energetic vibrational level gratitude gratitude from the heart look at the difference so even just think this is gratitude thinking about gratitude 45 hertz gratitude from the heart is when you really feel it when you really heartfelt yeah i'm so grateful for that uh appreciation empathy look at the different levels of love so love is a nice feeling i love you um, but not really a heart connection, still 50 hertz. Love, when you have a, an overwhelming love for all living beings, we're right up 150 plus. When we start to move into unconditional love, we're getting way beyond any virus being able to significantly touch us in terms of our health. And what he says, um, which I found really uh, interesting, he said the virus is more dangerous for people with low vibrational frequencies, especially given the effect of fear on reducing your immunity. People of a higher vibrational energy, so people who are more in this sort of area, will simply experience it as an acute respiratory infection and much less likelihood of complications. It'll just be like having a cold or a, a mild sort of a flu. It won't be a serious threat to their health. And this is something from my own personal observation. Uh, this is not backed by any science that I know of. Um, I have seen that people who have had the coronavirus vaccine, it seems to lower their vibrational energy, um, especially in individuals who are more sensitive. So just being aware of that, it doesn't matter whether you have or haven't had the vaccine, but if you have had the vaccine, be aware that you need to be even more mindful of keeping your vibrational energy higher because that vaccine does seem, from, from just what I observe, um, it does seem to lower your vibrational frequency. And that might be why we're, we're seeing so many more complications and problems. Um, So in the past, I've talked about the Schumann resonance of the earth, and it's often called the heartbeat of our earth. And remember I said Virgo is about the mother earth, 
the mother and the child, we are like Earth's children living in her care. And this is like the vibrational frequency of our planet. And it's measured as the frequency due to the impact of rays in the space between the Earth and her ionosphere. And they can measure this every year. In the past, it always remained fairly constant for, for, for centuries at about 7.6 to 7.8 hertz. And because most humans were resonating around this level, people felt very comfortable living on the earth. There was um, an attunement. We were in tune with the natural planet. But over the last 20 years, the human resonance has, become inc has been increasing quite dramatically quite recently. Um, and scientists have been measuring this. So you can see here, 95, it was creeping up. But then from 2014 to 2020, this was measured. This was the highest that's ever been measured. And this was measured at the grand conjunction that occurred at the winter solstice in 2020. So it's a very high energy time. Um, many see this esoterically as a sign that both our species and our planet Earth are undergoing a major evolutionary change, and that this is reflected in a shift en masse to higher vibrational frequencies. And you may have seen many things about people moving from um, a third dimension vibration to a fifth dimension vibration. Uh, and this sort of is where science and some of the more esoteric writings are starting to sort of come together. It's also one of the reasons why getting out and connecting with the natural world is so important to so grounding your energy, actually getting out in nature, because this will keep your vibration high and it will keep you aligned with this natural rise in the consciousness and evolution of humanity and our planet as a whole. So be aware that your vibrational frequency as reflected in your aura, your etheric body, be aware that fear lowers your entire frequency like nothing else. And remember it reduces the effectiveness of your immune system. Conscious behaviors of love and unity increase your vibrational frequency and boost your immunity like nothing else. And that word unity is important because what boosts our immunity is being together, is social interaction, helping each other and, and behaving and acting as humans in a community who care not separate, separated in our homes, not divided into those who, who have a vaccine and those who don't and those who agree with this and those who don't, but coming together and looking after each other. There's a suggestion by some that this virus was released to keep the vibrational um, vibration of the majority of human beings low to prevent this natural evolution and change in the coming in of a new paradigm. Those who seek to keep in the old paradigm of fear and control don't want to move into a new paradigm because they'll lose their control. Remember, viruses die at higher frequencies. Whatever the evolutionary reasons for this world pandemic, we who understand, as Einstein said, that everything in life is vibration, have a role to play in service to humanity by lifting our own vibrational frequency and ensuring it stays as high as we can, knowing we do this not just to ride the wave of this storm ourselves, but to contribute to the collective vibrational frequency of humanity and our planet as she moves through this critical transition being aware and mindful of your thoughts and feelings contributes to your vibrational state even more so than anything to do with keeping your physical body healthy. Meditation is like tuning in with the vibrational frequency of your soul. And this is the highest vibrational frequency that you are capable of in your current state of evolution. So when you meditate daily, you're tuning into the vibration of your soul. And it's like it raises 
your vibration. So meditate whenever your mind strays into fear, doubt, anxiety. Lift up into the silent observer who knows and sees these things as simply illusions. Meditation also develops the capacity of mindfulness. Staying centered in the present moment where fear, doubt, uncertainty and, environment and anxiety do not exist. They are simply found in thoughts focused on the past or thoughts projected from the past into the future. This is where practices like meditation, yoga, mindfulness, tai chi, qigong are so important as they bring us into contact with the strength, clarity and calm of our true self. We learn to detach from our thoughts in meditation and, and detach in the same way we learn to detach from the mainstream rhetoric in the world and simply observe. And this is really important. That capacity to step back from your thoughts that you develop in meditation enables you to step back from the drama of what's happening in the world, lift up to a higher perspective and see the truth of what's going on, using your critical mind and your discrimination to ascertain from your own intuitive connection to your higher self what is right, good and true. rather than simply blindly doing what you're told by those who vibrate with the old paradigm and a polarized and a low vibrational frequency who do not seek growth and evolution or a new paradigm for mankind at a higher vibration. No, they want to keep the status quo. They want to keep the power, the control, the material resources. They don't want to see humanity en masse evolve into living from a paradigm of love they're much more comfortable with the paradigm of fear. Much is written about the idea that as we lift our vibration as a collective, that our human DNA will alter. And there's even some evidence that this is happening already. And it'll change. And this change in our DNA will be reflected in physical changes in the human body as part of, as of this evolution. Bodies will become stronger, more disease resistant. This will not come about if humans mess with our DNA. But rather it will come about as a natural change that occurs with a lift of our collective higher vibrational frequency. We don't know what we're doing when we mess with our DNA because this level of understanding is not, it's not come together with the science yet. And this is where messing with our DNA is very worrying for those who understand. I want to bring you back to a previous talk I did where I um, introduced you to, to the work of David R. Hawkins. And what he did in 1995 was he mapped, it was a logarithmic scale. So this is not anything to do with the um, vibrational frequencies in hertz that I measured before. This is more a comparison scale of using different algorithms of the energetic frequency of different emotional states. And when these emotional states, when we talk about these, this is not just when you lift up into love once or twice. This is when you maintain a frequency, a vibrational frequency up here, the, ma the majority of the time. OK, so this, if you like, is a natural human evolution. And it's no coincidence that we have here the different colors of the chakras. Um, if you recognize, you know, base up to sacral, solar plexus around here, heart, your throat, up into the higher centers in the head. So what he, um, you can read his book called Power Versus Force. But what he, the essence of the book is, he said that it only takes 15% of the world's population operating above the critical level of 200. So here, this is your solar plexus chakra up into the heart. So that level of 200 is like, is like that between the lower four chakras and the higher chakras. Okay, so this is, this is the... In theosophy, this is where we talk about the Antakarana, the rainbow bridge from when we transmute from fear into love. And he said, um, so there's only about 15% of the population 
on a hold operate up here and that's their vibrational frequency but the collective power of that 15 percent has the weight to counterbalance the negativity of the remaining 85 percent of the world's population who are operating down here and basically this is why we haven't <laughs> wiped ourselves out to date because there are 15 percent and this was in 1995 I believe on an intuitive level that it's more than 15% now because I think part of this pandemic, part of the role of this pandemic is vastly increasing the numbers. So I don't know what the figures are now, but I believe that that is the awakening that this world crisis is for, is to move more people from down here up into these higher centers, up into higher vibrations. And once we reach a critical mass, I don't know what that critical mass is. Maybe it's once we reach 30% of people, they'll pull the others through. They'll lift the vibration of everybody. So this is a direct quote from his book. And he says, a single avatar at a consciousness level of a thousand. So if I just pop back, a thousand was enlightenment is simply is this is someone who has merged who has lost all separateness has merged with pure consciousness um is a living embodiment of christ the christ consciousness um so we've known a few avatars in our human history and they in fact totally counterbalance the collective negativity of all of mankind and this is why avatars come to earth in history they come at times when the collective negativity of all of mankind is getting close to self-destruction and an avatar will just lift the vibration enough so that we can survive and evolve but if you look at these different levels okay let's just pop back here and look what's 300 so 300 is someone who is in forgiveness optimism hopeful harmonious acceptance and willingness so they're operating in the the higher realms of the solar plexus so when someone moves up into pure reason this is critical thinking this is that discrimination thinking for yourself um understanding meaningful view of life this is 400 so when someone resonates with pure love when they've really moved up and open the heart chakra and they live from a place of an open heart they're resonating at this 500 level notice joy up there is up at 540 remember i said it, it's it's the most healing vibration when someone resonates with pure peace when nothing really disturbs their peace they're up here okay so let's look back at these figures so one individual at 11 700 level 700 that was between peace and pure enlightenment counterbalances 70 million individuals below the level of 200 so lifts them one individual at 600 which was peace 10 million individuals someone who resonates in the heart with love who's operating at a level of 500 750,000 individuals they are raising the collective vibration someone at 400 now 400 let's just have a look 300 and 400 was moving up into the heart starting to look to, at understanding opening to compassion courage um these sort of moving into that heart space so it'd be a lot of people here who are who are starting to operate a lot of the time around this 300 400 level 90,000 individuals you're lifting the vibration of, 400,000 individuals. It takes just 12 individuals at level, level 700, that was peace moving up towards avatar, which equals one avatar. Remember, it's a logarithmic scale. Um, so if we have 12 individuals on the planet resonating at the level of, say, the Dalai Lama, um, I'm sure he's up there. Uh, Nelson Mandela, these type of people, uh, we're getting that avatar effect. If it were not for these counterbalances, mankind would self-destruct out of the sheer mass of its unopposed negativity. And this is the reason we're still here, <laughs> despite our history, despite us repeating our history at this time. 
However, people don't realize the power and the difference between a loving thought, if you're a mathematician, 10 to the power of ne negative 35 million microwatts, it's a tiny amount, but compared to a fearful thought, 10 to the power of 750 million microwatts. So a fearful thought is much denser, it's much heavier, it's much harder to shift than a loving thought. So it's so enormous, um, this whole understanding is to be beyond the capacity of the human imagination to even comprehend. That was his statement in 1995. And I would like to think that um, we're doing better than that now <laughs> because we're becoming aware, much more aware. Um, so I believe this pandemic is changing the balance and we are in the transition from the old paradigm to the new. I urge you be one of the 15% and consciously raise and maintain a high vibration as an act of service to humanity. It will not only improve your life and your capacity to navigate what's going on in the world, but you will be lifting the vibration of all those people who are really struggling, who just do not have the capacity to yet but you will be helping them to evolve and helping our planet as a whole to shift her vibration. Be awake, aware, and part of the solution is a really good catchphrase. If I find myself sinking into negativity, I'm awake, I'm aware, and I'm part of the solution through my mind. So at the Virgo new moon, you have a potent very potent opportunity to do this. This is the time to change your mind. This is the time when you are supported immensely to, to shift and lift your vibration, to leave how you have been behind and to move into a new way of being. So there's amazing, amazingly a powerful supportive energies right here and now. Just a couple of things before we move into the meditation. Um, these are a couple of things that came up that I thought were very supportive. Spiritual secrets you learn over time. The sun upgrades your DNA. Okay, the sun works on our energy vibration. Obviously not staying out in it till you have heat stroke or sunburn, but recognize that the pranic energy, the, the energy and vibration of the sun vitalizes our etheric body. The moon strengthens your psychic abilities. If you've ever sat outside and communed with the moon, you know. <clears throat> Trees absorb negative energies. This is our connection to Virgo and the Mother Earth. The ocean has the ability to cleanse your aura and trigger a psychological state of calm and contentment. These are things that as you start to understand energy, you will start to instinctively and intuitively know, and you'll be drawn to do these things. So this, my dear, is the greatest challenge of being alive, to witness the injustice of this world and not allow it to consume your light. And that's our challenge in this time. Stop trying to calm the storm calm yourself because the storm will pass okay we've done this before in history we move up the spiral last time we moved up the spiral was the world wars we're in the next we're coming round to the same point on the spiral now and we can do this so i want to leave the talk there and i know it's a bit longer the talk tonight but i just there was nothing i could leave out there um, I thought it was too important. So we will move into meditation now. And remember, when we meditate together, we are significantly, significantly helping to raise the collective vibrational frequency as well as our own. And we're doing this in a communal supportive way. We're tuning into each other's energies and we're lifting our vibrations. So meditation as a group and a group is an act of service. So to bring our energies into alignment with our heart and bring our energies together, I just want us to repeat the affirmation of love. So repeat it to yourself silently or out loud and be focused on coming together in this group. 
So in the center of all love, I stand. From that center, I, the soul, will outward move. From that center, I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the divine self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. So get yourself comfortable with your spine reasonably upright. Close your eyes. And I just want you to let everything that I've been talking about go for now. We can come back to discuss it if we want to afterwards. And anything that you really need will be there for you later. I want you to imagine that you are sending a connection down into Mother Earth to connect with the resonance of her vibrational energy, to affirm your connection to our home, our planet, our mother. And do this either through your feet or through the base chakra, the base of your spine. Now I want to bring your awareness into the present moment. So just be aware of your body sitting on the chair. Be aware of the clothes on your skin. Now take this awareness to your sense of hearing and simply listen to the sounds in the room at this moment. Let them be as they are. Now take this awareness to your breath. Just start to observe the breath as it comes into your body and as it leaves. Just keeping a gentle focus on the breath. And you will find it naturally takes your awareness inward. As you feel your body beginning to relax, take the breath a little deeper with each cycle. And imagine you are opening a channel down through the very center of your body, especially opening a space between your sternum and your spine and your heart center. Continue to open and widen this channel until it's comfortable to breathe into your belly. Continue to allow your mind to focus on the breath. Observe your thoughts as they calm down. And by keeping a gentle focus on the breath, you will find that you are able to start to simply observe your thoughts. See them come into your mind, simply pass through your mind and you return to a focus on the breath. And just return to this focus on the breath whenever your mind becomes distracted.
Now bring your awareness to the center of your chest and I want you to breathe into your heart center. Imagine your heart is filling with light and love and gratitude, which will open this center like a flower bud opens into full bloom. This will lift your vibrational energy up into the heart center. So really feel gratitude in your heart. And as we open the heart, we open a gateway to the connection to our higher self or our soul through the heart. Now working with the higher centers, I want you to visualize white or violet, purple or gold light coming down from your higher self through the crown of your head. And vivifying the major energy centers or chakras in your body in alignment with your spine. Bringing these energy centers into perfect vertical alignment and into interplay. So there is a free flow of energy within your whole being. And you come into attunement with the vibration of your higher self or your soul as you're flooded with this high frequency energy. Imagine your heart is acting as a vessel to receive and distributed, distribute this lighted love from your soul throughout your body. So your whole physical body is filling with this purifying, cleansing, healing light, strengthening your physical vehicle, strengthening your immune system, calming your emotions, bringing clarity to your mind and an alignment between all aspects of you. So you are a coordinated and integrated being for the expression of your soul. Allow this lighted love to flow down through your crown Fill your entire physical body and emanate out into the aura or energy field that surrounds your physical body. Now imagine that this lighted love continues to flow and imagine it flowing out into your home touching all living beings that share your home with you. Now allow it to continue to flow out into your street, to your neighbors, to your neighborhood, to your community, touching the hearts and minds of all, consciously or unconsciously, raising their vibrational energy. Now radiate this lighted love out to encompass your whole town or city. Let nothing stand in the way of its flow. Now imagine that your light is connecting with the light of all of those joining us in this group meditation, whether live or via the recording. And allow this light now to fill our nation. lifting the vibrational frequency of all. 
up out of fear and doubt toward love, trust, hope, faith and unity. Let it flow out to fill this part of the world. To fill this whole hemisphere. And to radiate out so far that it fills the entire southern hemisphere as well. And we join with all groups who are working with light, with love, with raising the consciousness and the vibrational frequency of mankind. We join together with them in one united humanity. Now see our planet as if from space. And see this lighted love surrounding her like an aura, beautiful white light. And see this light flowing down into our planet, healing her, restoring the balance in nature so that the air and waters are clean and pure. Her healthy ozone layer is restored and our planet is healed and the balance returns. See all the animal and plant life flourishing and see this lighted love flowing into the hearts and minds of all of mankind, bringing peace, goodwill and right relations within individuals between individuals, within families, communities, and nations, between nations and the whole human family, between the human family and the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, the mineral kingdom, restoring our attunement with our beautiful planet, our mother earth. lifting our awareness and the collective consciousness so that we may move easily, evolving into a new paradigm, a new way of living in love, living with peace and harmony with all. Visualize these energies unifying and eliminating all divisions within humanity. Healing and transforming human consciousness. Raising the vibrational frequency of all up into the heart. Evoking the Christ consciousness in all. And establishing right human relations. Now continue to hold a space in your heart for this energy and let your love for humanity and for our planet vitalize this energy. Allow it to radiate out. And now I invite you to repeat the great invocation together, either silently or aloud. Repeat it with conviction and with a pause between each stanza to imagine the words being played out and that this world prayer acts as a link between the inner spiritual realities and humanity and creates a channel through which divine love and light and purpose can flow into human consciousness. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth.
and the point of love within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out. May it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Now slowly bring your energy back into your own energy field and start to come back into an awareness of your body. Opening your eyes when you are ready and just enjoying the feeling of peace, calm and clarity because this state that you are in now is a high vibrational energy state. So you're in tune with the vibration of your soul and with our collective consciousness. Now I'll give you a few moments <laughs> to come round. Uh, if you have any questions, um, if you're happy to speak, I can unmute you. Or if you would like to place any questions or comments in the chat, that's fine. Um, you all look a bit dazed. There's a lot of powerful energy when we work in group meditation, and it does really affect your vibration. Um, that's why you feel so good, you know, and you each hold the vibration for each other. Um, that's part of the power. Something I didn't mention in the talk, which is an interesting thought. You may be aware that we have different brainwave states that have different frequencies. So for example, when we're in a beta brainwave state, um, we can be in low beta, which is when we're quite chilled and thinking, um, just normal thought processes, moving into mid beta when we start to focus and we can develop critical thinking. As we move up the beta range, we can become increasingly agitated and as we move into stress, our mind tends to not function so well. Then we have the alpha brainwave state, which uh, is when we're starting to drop down into a lower frequency. And in the alpha brainwave state, we start to become more intuitive, uh, creative. We can still think and do things, but we're very calm, tranquil, serene. We're still awake and aware. Uh, it's when we're starting to drop down into a relaxed state of being. Then the next state down is a theta state, the state just between consciousness and unconsciousness, that state, that calm state when you're falling asleep. Uh, it's the state that we spend time in when we do a deep relaxation, when we're in prayer, when we're in meditation, when we're contemplative, when we're intuitively guided seeking guidance from within, a very healing state for the brain and the nervous system and the body. 
But the next state down when we actually lose consciousness is called the delta state. And it's of a very low vibration. And the idea of the delta state is we become less aware of the reality of the physical world and what's going on. And we're going into an unconscious sleep state. And it's been suggested that it's no coincidence that this is called the delta variant. Because people are asleep. When in this delta variant, people are, this virus is lowering their vibrational frequencies to the point where they are asleep and no longer aware of the truth of what's going on in the world. So have a ponder on that, um, whether it's a coincidence it was called the Delta variant or not. But it is always possible to lift up into higher vibrational states where you become increasingly aware and awake and part of the solution. Okay, so that's just a coincidence to ponder on. It was something um, somebody presented to me and I thought, hmm, okay. That might be uh, life having a laugh or it might be intentional, who knows? But it's something to think about. So if nobody's got any questions, um, I'm very aware I've gone over time tonight uh, and you're all feeling nice and relaxed. Uh, you can go and have a bit of a think about all the things that I've talked about and see if you can keep your vibration high. Um, so if you notice it's dropping, do those things, look at what your thoughts, step back from your thoughts, get out in nature, connect with other people who raise your vibration, avoid people who lower your vibration. Um, do some of the things that really help to shift up into that higher frequency because you wanna be part of the new paradigm. Let's let go of the old one. It doesn't serve us very well. Okay, on that note, I'll say thank you very much for this evening. Namaste.